Hi everyone. Welcome to another video by Chinta. I am Rajdeep. Uh today we'll look at a problem from the recent TIFR round 2 exam. It was a written exam. The question paper is not publicly available uh, at least as of now. Uh, I wrote the test so uh, I wanted to share a problem uh, which is completely explainable at an elementary level uh, and it's very interesting uh, and it's an application of the f of a few of the ideas i have discussed before in a few of my videos uh and i hope you enjoyed so let's get into it so here is the problem uh prove that for all n greater than 1 n does not divide 2 to the n minus 1 uh it's a relatively simple problem um compared to the other problems that showed up on the test and i mean it's one of those things that uh your intuition is probably right first of all you can check a few cases and you know as usual pause the video and try the problem on your own um but the idea is that you could check a few cases uh and you'd see that of course it's true um but you also want so what kind of a statement are you looking at so you know if you argue on the contrary for the sake of contradiction uh you're looking at a statement like this right like say this was true you want to show that this is this can never be true but if you do you are looking at statements that you know are sort of connected to fermat's little theorem or euler's theorem right since n is not a prime you really are just looking at euler's theorem uh actually in that these these are instead of n um you generally looking at like power of two mod mod n so that's where euler's theorem can help you out it can provide you something to hold on to right but to apply euler's theorem you first have to make sure that the that the number you're taking a power of and your modulus are co prime and in this case you want to make sure that n is odd which is not really nothing that uh it's not a point of concern at all um because first so the first thing you can say is that n must be odd why uh well because if n was even uh then 2 would have to divide this odd number 2 to the n minus 1 is odd and even number can't divide an odd number so that's the first thing you get and now you can freely apply all of your uh, multiplicative results So the main thing to notice, like if you take a small, if you take small values of n, is that there's some clash, and the clash, if this was true, there's some clash in that. This is true, but this is always true, right? This is always true, and this here is true, sort of by contradiction. The thing is that these powers don't really mesh together, like generally. how can something like this be true it can only be true if the order of 2 mod n divides both of these numbers which like if you see like if you actually take examples you take uh, something like a prime obviously so that's the thing so uh, if n is prime this is very easy to see that it doesn't work because uh, if 2 to the p is congruent to 1 mod p well first of all this is immediately false because 2 to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p by fermat's little theorem or euler's theorem and these two can't be simultaneously true because well they can't uh, because root the p minus 1 congruent to 1 mod p just implies root to the p is congruent to 2 mod p and but the thing is how do you argue in general so that is where something like n is equal to 9 gives you some clarity if root to the 9 was congruent to 1 mod 9 it would cause some friction with the statement that 2 to the what is phi of 9 p of 9 is well since p of 3 square generally p of p to the k is 3 so p to the k minus 1 times 2 p minus 1 which is 6 so you know that 2 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod 9 the thing is now you can manipulate right you can you can get some something weird to work uh so in particular this can give you that uh so here's another thing is that okay once you see these these things your immediate urge would be to can i just divide this so can i just This will tell me that two to the three is congruent to one mod nine. It's a bit iffy, but we know that inverses work. So the the this is true because two is invertible mod nine, right? We've this uh, I've covered this in one of my number theory series videos. Since this is true, I can take negative powers of numbers. So two to the minus six makes sense in that this is two to the minus one, which exists. It's some modulus mod nine. uh i think in this case it should be so 2 inverse is 5 mod 9 right 5 into 2 is 10 which is 1 mod 9 and so 2 to the minus 6 when i write 2 to the minus 6 what i really mean is this 2 to the minus 1 to the power 6 or 5 to the power 
But as an idea, this makes sense. And 2 to the minus 6 behaves exactly, like 5 to the 6 behaves exactly the same as 2 to the minus 6. In that, when I multiply 2 to the 9 with 5 to the 6, I will get 2 to the power 3. Because 5 to the 6 is the inverse of 2 to the power 6. So, this is a reasonable thing that you can do. And now this is false because 2 to the 3 is 8 and 8 can is not common to 1 more 9. So, you immediately get a contradiction even without having to calculate what 2 to the 9 is. The idea being that you've reduced the power and hence brought your statement to something that you can control. So I'll give you the solution. Uh, it's a very simple solution. It's frustratingly simple, actually. Um, we proceed by something that's called strong induction. So for those of you who haven't seen strong induction before, strong induction says that if Pn is, you know, some statement for each natural number, uh, and if it is known, uh, uh, and if the truth of if p1, p2, pn minus 1 being true are true, if all of them are true, implies p of n is true, this is true for all natural numbers n, then p of n is true for all natural numbers. The idea being that if you know the truth of all the statements say if you know p1 is true, p2 is true, all the way up to p10 is true, and you can use these statements to prove that p11 is true, then you can keep doing this and eventually prove that all uh, the statement is true for all natural numbers. It's stronger than induction because for normal induction, you only use the truth of p of n minus 1. So p of n minus 1 implies p of n, uh, and you have some base case, and that gives you the, the full result. Strong induction rely, relies on all the previous, uh, the truth of all the previous values of n. Uh, so without wasting time, uh, it's easy to check that n is equal to 2 fails. Uh, but like, let's let's not even take that bad example, since 2 is even, right? And we already assume that, like we already showed that even numbers just outright don't work. I, I can even easily see that n is equal to 3 does not work in that uh, the statement that uh, n does not divide 2 to the n minus 1 is true for n is equal to 3. It, it's also true for n is equal to 2. Uh, remember that we're trying to prove this for n greater than 1, right? Because for 1, it obviously works, right? 1 divides anything. So it is true. It's very easy to see that 3 doesn't divide 2 to the 3 minus 1, uh, 7, right? 3 doesn't divide 7. So now assume that p1 is true all the way up to some pn is true, are all true. You want to show that uh, pm plus 1 is true. So you want to show that 2 to the n plus 1 is not congruent to 1 mod n plus 1. Uh, for the sake of convenience, like let me not have a plus 1. So let me assume that p1 to pm minus 1 aren't true. Now I want to show that 2 to the n is not congruent to 1 mod, say it was. For the sake of contradiction, let 2 to them congruent to 1 more than. Now, sort of going by the example we just took, it's also true that 2 to the phi n is congruent to 1 more than. Here I'm sort of only inducting on the odd values, like, uh, because it doesn't matter actually, like, you can only induct on odd, like, that's how, that's the beauty of induction that you can sort of make the whatever jump you want to make. So. I can, as it's obviously true for even values, but I only care about odd values since well, uh, even values are trivial. So m is odd, uh, and m is odd. So pm minus 1 is trivially true, so even pm minus 2 is true. See, this is why strong induction is important, and uh, it'll be clear later, is that uh, this being true will imply that uh, 2 to the some smaller uh, number is congruent to one more that same smaller number and you don't have control over what that smaller number is. That's why we use strong induction. Regardless, so m is odd, uh, m is odd, and if 2 to the m is congruent to 1 more m, I know that 2 to the phi m is also congruent to 1 more m, which implies what? It, it implies that any linear combination of integers is also congruent to 1 more m where a and b are integers. Why is this true? Because I can raise this thing to any positive power or negative power for that matter, since 2 is invertible, right? Why can I do integers and not just... Uh, okay, if a and b were only natural numbers, this is obviously true, right? You're just raising this to a certain power, positive power, and you're raising this to a certain positive power, and multiply. Obviously, it works. The reason why you can do it for negative numbers is because of what I said earlier. Since 2 is invertible, mod m. Since 
to his either like m is odd that's why it's invertible so there is a subtle point here that you can take even negative numbers here now this is where bezos theorem comes into play it's it's a result of covered in on of my number theory videos which says that uh, i can write the gcd of well in this case m n fm uh, as am plus b fm for some integers a and b so if i choose those integers whatever they are that uh, what i just wrote down implies that 2 to the gcd of m n fm is congruent to 1 mod Right. I've just cho chosen A and B, positive or negative, uh, and I know that this is true. Right? But this is where the clever part is, is that if this is true, uh, since this is the GCD and the GCD divides M, uh, I also get that 2 to the GCD and Cn is congruent to 1 mod the GCD of M and Cn. I've only done a very simple thing here. I've done that if A divides C uh, and b divides a then b divides c that's all i've done m divides 2 to the that thing minus 1 and the gcd divides m so the, the so the gcd divides 2 to the gcd minus 1 that's all i've done but this can't be true by the induction hypothesis this is a smaller number right the gcd of m and fm is strictly smaller than uh m because fm is strictly smaller than m and the gcd has to be at, it can at most be one of the two numbers. So that's it. This is so we have a contradiction by strong induction. Yeah, and the thing is, like, how do you motivate the solution? Like, how do you think of this? You first notice that uh, if this is true, when m is odd, then you can do this. And it's like, why can I? Why I could have done two to the m minus v m, right? The thing is that this is not good because I can't control the modulus that way. I come down to the GCD because I can control the modulus. That's the idea. That's why, and so uh, the issue with writing proofs like this is that the intuition gets lost. How would you discover strong induction as the thing you want to do? Is that you're using uh, the truth of, it's like the logic actually goes the other way. You assume that this false statement is true and that gives you a false statement for a smaller value of n. Now that smaller value you can't control, that's why you use strong induction, right? Uh, it's some smaller number and I don't know which, that's why I use strong induction. Even though I'm writing the proof as I'm doing strong induction and this is, and it works like this. The intuition goes the other way. So I hope that's clear. And yeah, that's the that's the proof. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.